every big project, there's always one moment you remember for the rest of your life. And when I ran across Canada, that one moment is meeting Jack, the little guy on the screen. So at this point, I'm about halfway through the run across Canada. And that morning, he shows up. He, too, lives with type 1 diabetes, wanted to say hi, wanted to cheer me up, donate. Unfortunately, not a bottle of Thomasy, but uh, all of his savings to support the run. There's not a lot of money in the box. He's 10. That's all he has. Very selfless little man. His parents are mentors today. So it's the beginning of a beautiful relationship. I'm so thankful that we met. We were able to do a few dinners and that was fun. And of course, at one point, Patrick and I, we have to say goodbye. And that was not as much fun. Two weeks later, so I'm now running in Northam, Ontario, Northam, Canada, between Sault Ste. Marie and Winnipeg, the next town, there's 1,200 kilometers. Um, Canadians here will know that there's four houses in between those two towns. And again, another Canadian joke, uh, you're looking forward to get to Winnipeg, so that says... <laughs> And I'm hitting the wall. Like, things are really, really, really tough. You know, I know a lot of... I, I, the gym was full at 5.38. I loved it. You don't get to one billion a year by accident. I loved. It was so telling to see the gym so full at 5.30. So, I'm hitting the wall. I know that a lot of you know what it is. And at one point, the escort vehicle comes right next to me. The windows are down. And I can hear Jack's voice. And it was Jack, after school, who decided to call. And the questions he's asking, again, he's 10. Are you eating well? Are you sleeping well? How's your diabetes? And Jack calls back every single week till the end of the run. It's always the nicest and the best moment of the week. So whenever people ask, was there ever a time when I thought about quitting and giving up, trust me, I had dark days physically and mentally. Now, because of this, it never crossed my mind to stop. You know, we have, each of us have a why. I got to meet him. There was a massive distinction between what was a bad day and the reason why we were doing what we were doing. Motivation is not what you do when you have a bad day. It's the reason why you want to get through a bad day. Now, our lives are busy. It's, I get that sometimes, you know, that we forget, that we disconnect. Here's a question. You know, how to reconnect with it? When we ask ourselves, what would happen if we didn't exist, if we didn't do the work that we do, if we weren't there for our team members, and then the people we serve, and then the community, the impact you have on communities, that you decided to have on communities. Another question I love, what's best for the world? Sometimes in business, we have tough decisions to, to make. You remove, you remove ego and money, no decisions are tough to make. What's best for the world? And we're missing one finish line, the run. And I'll never forget it because Jack, the little boy who'd been calling all year, decided with his family to surprise us on the finish line. So that's the, the meeting, the production meeting the day before. They said they would not have missed it for the world. It was a very emotional moment. So the next day, I was able to run the last five kilometers with Jack. And I'll, I'll never forget that moment when he kind of 
I had to took off and I sat down on a bench by myself and I waited for the final go just to come in and the media was there. It was a timed arrival, of course. And I remember one feeling. I was happy. We had had such a beautiful impact on so many people. And in the end, that's what we're all chasing. That's what we're all looking for. And when we understand that it's, it's right here, it's right there all the time, life gets a little better. 